Hey everybody, Rachel here from reachthestamper.com and I'm going to make a card with you today with one of my favorite stamp sets in the holiday, winter, and whatever you want to call it catalog. I l love this and I love this one just like I loved um, last year, the camper. This is so cute and as a matter of fact, um, I did see Tammy White made this into a camper and it was really, really, really cute. So this cool stamp set also has a coordinating die set. It's really fun. I wanna show you one of the other, oh, crikey, hold on. I wanna show you one of the other ones that I've created with this. So this actually, you can, you can cut out, you can stamp this and then cut it out. It just depends on what you wanna do. So today we're gonna to just be using the die cut, but if you were to stamp it and cut it out, this is what it looks like. So you stamp this in whatever color you wanna use. Um, then you die cut it out. Then you cut out the rail or the whatever guard decorative portion. I did that in silver foil, which was really fun. And then to make the windows instead of the way I did it this time, I actually used vellum. So this is a piece of vellum back here. The only thing is it is vellum with um, adhesive sheet on it to make it stick. So the windows on this are a little sticky, which kind of makes them look frosted. But also if you touch it, it probably will tend to attract a little bit of dirt. So I don't know if that was my best idea, but I still think it turned out pretty cute. So you could do as equally cute of a card with the windows behind it. But this one, what I did is I actually paper pieced these back together. So what it ends up doing is um, sit kind of inlays them back into the card. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. And the inside of this one, we actually have a little extra tree here. And I used the basic border dies to make a little snow mound. That was a little extra step I took for this. So I cut just a piece from here and then put a little bit of, um, what is that, pool party, just to kind of give that sky look. Did a little die cut tree. And then this one here, this snowbank is actually from this. So it's pretty wide. So what you can do is you can cut it depending on how big you want it. You can move it up to cut it so you have the big piece there. So you can see that, where's my other one? These two are a little bit different. So with how I placed my trees, so the second time I made it, I was a little bit more cognizant to put my trees up just a little bit higher, if you could see there, but same basic principle. And then I have um, the sentiment, this is peacock, and then this one is spruce, and then peacock. So it really just depends on what you want to do with your card. So I'm going to show you how to create this. We're going to need a couple things. We're going to need this. Um, I already did die cut a tree, so this is the tree, but this larger one actually will die cut this tree here, so you could do that. And then there's also a few different ways, there's there's a smaller tree as well, but there's a few different ways, so you see that you have this hanging one, which actually will die cut with this, so it is a little bit, oh, no, that's not it, hold on, I think that was just for, that one's just for stamping. Yeah, so there's this one would just be if you were stamping the seam, but you have a smaller die cut, which I kind of toyed with doing this one instead, but I like the one that rode the rails. There's also, um, if you wanted to do this one, you could kind of build it yourself. So there's lots of options for this, but I tended to go with the kind of all-in-one rail. But the only thing I want to tell you is when you're creating this card... You want to, you can see how steep this is, and I did not angle this correctly, so it's not really even lining up. You want to make sure that you build this whole gondola car prior to stamping your lines, your cable line, so you can kind of line it up. It's still really going on both, <laughs> so you could have one on a different one if you wanted to, but I'm going to show you what I mean with that. So the only thing we use for this, we use the rail and we use the sentiment. There are also snowflakes in here if you wanted to add it. Oh no, you know what? This is what I did with this. I added these. See, I thought that was with marker. Here, I'm telling people the wrong thing. I added these onto the tree. So they could be snow or it could be like a little bit of decorative. So we're going to do that. So see, I remember things. I Sometimes I design cards so far in advance that I have difficulty remembering what it was exactly that I did for the card. <laughs> so we are going to use the same. We're going to be using a peacock base. And I'm going to show you everything we have here. Most of it is already ready to roll. So this is our tree. We can add a little stuff to. I already die cut the rail. This is just a piece of silver foil that has adhesive uh, paper on it. We have our full card base, four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. So that's 
ready to go. And then we have our front panel and our inside panel, okay? And then this piece is the one that we're gonna do all the die cutting from. So let me show you that first. So to begin, we're going to put this on the bottom, okay? And that is gonna be our bottom piece. We're gonna also need to cut out the gondola, which I'm gonna move him up here because I'm gonna to try to retrim and get a piece here. Our gondola and the rail. And then I'm gonna trim this off to get this little slope. So we should be able to get both things out of the same thing. So I'm gonna do this first. And I'm just going to bring it over here to line it up because you do have to put it in sideways because of the length of this die. All right. So put that on the corner. And then these will be up here at the top. Oh, come on, you little stinker. All right, so I'm going to run this through first. Then we have our piece. We have this whole situation and we do need these windows. So hang on to those. And we do need this, I don't know, I call it a rail. I don't really know, a cage. I don't really know exactly what that part is, but we do need that. But then we're also going to make our second inside snowbank. Is it this one? Nope, it's this one this little inside snowbank layer. You could also cut it out of this piece and just make it a little bit smaller, but what we're gonna do is grab our trimmer really quickly, and I'm gonna just even this off the lowest point I could find, and then we'll put this back in. And this will just be our inside slope. So it can be as much or as little as you want. That looks good. Okay, and one final run through and then we'll get started. Okay, so we really only have this little piece that we're chucking. All right, let me put these back, put this here and this, okay. Uh, trash and trash. All right, so to begin, we're going to start with doing our gondola car, okay, because these are going to just get sponged with our blending brush. This we don't need to do anything with. This one we're going to just pop out all these little extra pieces because this all we need is the outside. Okay, so we have that. But for this one, we do need the windows. But I'm going to pop the windows out because we're going to do those separately. Okay. So the easiest way to do this <clears throat> is, and I went with Light and Dark Poppy Parade, you're going to use the brush tip of your marker. Now, if you color this way, you have the chance that you might get color where you, where you don't want. So if we were coloring the inside this way. But... If you turn this this way, and you're gonna just follow the natural line of the image, you just have to kind of make yourself have a little confidence <laughs> with your brush stroke. Maybe prior to having your coffee for the morning. Okay, and then all we're gonna do is color on the inside. So the nice part about Stampin' Blends or any alcohol markers, I don't really know very much about alcohol markers, so I can really only say Stampin' Blends, is that you're layering color on top of them. So I'm going to just close this like so for a minute. This one didn't get closed. And you want to make sure you cap them because obviously al alcohol does evaporate. And then you're going to just add some darker color where you want it. So for me, I wanted to kind of shade it more at the bottom. I didn't want the whole thing to be dark. 
So just rotate it like that. Oop, I went just a little bit outside there, which is fine. You know, things happen. So I have that. And then I'm going to go back in and I'm going to just blend down a little bit with my light. Just to get rid of that line. So you have a little bit more of a fade instead of a hard line. Now the other thing you can do, and this depends on how you want to do. So you can see I added a little bit of blue here just to kind of cover the edge. So I took my light Azure Afternoon and I kind of went to the edge. Now since this one I'm drawing on the edge, I was a little bit more, not really free, but I kind of just follow the line from the outside because I have my bullet point instead or bullet tip instead of my brush. Okay. So there's that. So you have that. Okay. It also gives it a little bit more depth. Now what you're going to do is you just want to make sure all of your windows are facing one direction. So I kind of added for this like a glass look but also as if it was a little bit frosted um one is definitely more than the other so this one uses pool party and then dark pool party this one i use pool party and then the light azure okay so it really just depends on which one you prefer so i'm going to go in first with the pool party because the whole thing is going to be pool party oh i bet you this is darker and i probably yep i intended to bring the light and i didn't but that's okay try this one just for a little bit something different and light 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 well that's soft seafoam that's not gonna work light pool party where are you here it is <laughs> i have so many markers up there i'm always hoping that nothing's gonna go take a ca catastrophic fall so we'll go here same thing. Now the other one is darker, so we'll see how that how we feel about that. Oh, it kind of lightened up a little bit. That's the cool part about these blends is once the alcohol does evaporate, they do tend to change tone just slightly. I'm going to put a little bit dark here in the corner of each one. There you go. And that's good. Okay, so Azure Afternoon, Light and Dark Pool Party, Light and Dark Poppy Parade. So basically now the only thing we have to do is give this just a minute for this to dry. And then we're going to piece it back in. And the way we're going to do that is just with a piece of washi. So I'm going to just take a little strip of washi. doesn't need to be this big. What I tend to do is this. I will set it in where I want it. Kind of like that. Spread this out if I can get it to stay. Lift. Oops, that one fell out. Lift and line it up. I'm going to just put this one piece back in. Press, 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 press. Okay. Then you can tuck this behind, or if you want, you can trim it off. Just depends on your preference. Okay. So there's that. And we're going to put our rail on. So I just want to put some liquid glue. Um, you could have backed this with some adhesive paper probably would have been a little bit simpler but it doesn't need a ton of glue because it's not like it's a moving card it's more just for decorative purposes just like so it's going to hold that for a second okay and then finally we have this now this one i was smart about i put adhesive sheet on this so i'm going to go ahead and peel this off and oh 
although my window came off because of my washi. And I'm going to put this right here on the top. Oop, 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 hold on. Okay, pressing. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just use my snips and I'm going to just take just this little bit of washi off. Okay, and I'm going to add some dimensionals to the back, which will also kind of help our washi to stay in place. I'm going to put it right at the edge there. like that okay now with this here's my one little thing that you want to be careful of and I had this little piece here earlier I don't know what I did with it but you have this rail okay and this is pretty thin and you might think well, what am I going to use to hold this up so you're going to need to use a piece of very thin but you don't want to resort to using um the strips the foam adhesive strips because they are not the same height as dimensionals are so what I usually do is I'll cut a half of the side piece off and I'll just kind of place it in so put this here that should be pretty well hidden yep and I'm gonna just nip this and Put a piece here. And here. I'm hoping you can see that. So I just put that little strip here, here, and here. Dimensionals on the back. And it is pretty well hidden. Okay? So that's probably the most difficult part of it. All right. So now let's move over. And I'm going to leave this out for a minute. Actually, let me do this really quickly before I forget. I'm going to grab, I'm going to do a little bit of stamping now. So we're going to grab our peacock. And we're going to just add the little, I don't know what you want to call it, to the trees. So it looks like it has a little more, more depth to it. There you go. That's cool. We'll leave that be put this on the side and now we're going to do our front so keep in mind that you have this okay you're going to have your slope here okay you're going to have this depending on where it is you situate it so when you do your trees you you want to have some back here behind the snowbank but you want to have some where you can see kind of the base of the tree as well just because it gives it a more uh I guess like a depth realistic feeling so I'm gonna just stick with peacock I'm not gonna do the spruce I ended up liking the peacock better I think my first one was done with spruce so I'm gonna just clean this off just to make sure really clean before we use it so I have my and I'm using this multiple times without re-inking it so I'm gonna go over here first Remember, the tree that's in the foreground, you want to be darker. Ooh, we missed a little bit there. Yeah, it's okay. I'm going to stamp this off again. The tree in the background is going to be lighter. Even though you're stamping a second, it's still kind of going behind there. I'm having a little bit of an issue. This happened yesterday, too, with this little spot here. So I'm going to try to fill that in. So same thing again. See, we didn't want that hard line because you would have got a line of darker ink. So we're going to stamp off, go up, and I'm going to do it one more time. Stamp off, third. Okay, so that worked really well. But now, over here, I kind of have this little splotch, right, where it didn't quite fill in the way I wanted it to and to get this to line up with the same inking property is probably not going to happen. So something you can do if you're okay with it 
You could do this one of two ways. You can either use a blender pen, add some ink and fill it in, but you have to remember that it's also going to reactivate the ink around it. Same thing, you could also do this with a wink of Stella pen. So we have it up here as well. So I'm gonna show you what I mean. And we're, these are gonna just be a little bit softer of trees. So I have my little pool of ink. So I'm gonna just grab a little bit here. I'm gonna do the darker one first. So we're just kind of bringing in this spot, but you have to see, and I'm gonna make sure you can see that, it kind of softens the whole area. So at this point, you kind of have to commit when you're filling it in. Commit to kind of filling in the color. So I don't really even need to add any more ink, and I wanna show you what this looks like. So this is very white in the background, and this I'm just bringing the color in. So you kind of just have to commit to a little bit of a change of what your image is gonna look like. So instead of having the white and all on its own, this is still a really cool thing. I'm gonna bring in just a teeny bit of ink just cause it's, this was a little bit more dry by the time I started. Okay, but same thing again here. So when you bring this in, it's going to kind of make this just a little bit lighter all over because you're filling in the color. And specifically when I'm down here in the spot where I goofed up. So we're gonna just kinda, now you can go in with your little strip to kind of make some more detail there if you want. But really kind of like, if you if you all remember so long ago, I brought these in actually for the preschool kids a couple years ago, where we used to have the uh, paint by numbers where all you needed was just your little wet and, and granted, okay, so just real quick, these are more white, these are colored. I'm gonna bring these in because I kind of want it to be the same. I want uniform on both sides. So I'm just gonna commit to coloring both of these in. But if you remember the little paint by numbers where you just had to get yourself a little cup of water and your book had all the paint on it and all you were doing is activating the ink, that's kind of what you're doing with a blender pen if you think of it that way. You're just re-wetting the ink that you already put down. Now, if this is super dry ink, it may not work as well. So I don't necessarily know that you would be able to get the same effect if you um, went in after this was thoroughly dry. It would be a little bit harder to get the color to blend. It probably would still work. But you could also do this with a wink of Stella, which would then additionally give you a little bit of sparkle. Okay, now, since I've already done this, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do instead of what I normally would have done. Okay, so we do still need this for our sentiment, but I'm gonna put this away for now, okay? And what I'm gonna do, we have our, our little snow slope here, and we also have, where's my other piece? Our front sl snow slope. So I'm gonna go in with my blending brush. You could use a smaller one if you wanted, and pool party. And just ever so lightly, I'm just going to add just a little bit so it's just not, not stark white snow. You kind of want a little bit of shading so it sticks up. The cool part about this particular die is it actually has embossed pieces in it, so that's really neat. And I'm just going to do this on the inside slope. And I should have done this ahead of time, but I forgot. So I'm going to show you what you're going to do after the fact. I wanted to originally go in, if you can see here in the background, I have like some cloud banks. So you have to be careful. Same on this one. You have to be careful because the ink you use now could reactivate this. But since we blended it, it probably shouldn't be quite so much. But when I add this in, I do kind of try to hop around because I want to have the illusion of clouds. And clouds are basically when you're creating a card, it's the, the white space that you have. So this probably doesn't show, but it looks like there's a really large cloud and there's some sky. And that's kind of what you want. Okay, so then the other thing is originally what I did is I took, you can see it here, my uh, stamp and blend, my light pool party, and I went over the edges. But instead, what I might try to do is I'm going to do it with pool party, but I'm going to do it with my Wink of Stella brush. That way it'll also be a little bit shimmery. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit, see what that. We're kind of just, the, these may or may not even show up because depending on where I put my snowbank in, but I like to do them just in case.
just like a little bit of shadowing doesn't need to be a lot and then what you'll do is you're going to put your snowbank so these we definitely won't see which is fine but we will see something here so that's kind of what we're going for and finally before we do our last portion where did i do i want to stamp my sentiment in pretty peacock and that is going to actually go on here so the only thing you have to do is just be a little tiny bit careful because there is a little bit of texture as i said to the layer you're stamping on so you don't want to bump your words accidentally all right so i did on the front of this one was oh one other thing i wanted to clean this i was going to see if i could maybe add in a couple little snowflakes depending on what i thought so i'm going to go with the same one let's let's adventure together so i'm going to go ahead and put this on my block and i just want to wipe this off okay just make sure it's inking well okay so then I'm going to just put this on a corner so I can be assured that it's lined up straight. All right, looks good. Wipe this off. Um, if you wanted to, you could certainly also put something on the inside. So remember now we have this piece that's going on the inside. We are going to need to trim this a little bit. We have our little tree that it can, either can go there or here. And I'm going to just put a little teeny bit of blue. We could also put another sentiment on the inside if you wanted to. Or you could just stamp a little tree. But I think I'm just going to leave this as it is. The only other thing I wanted to do was add a couple little... Let's see if we can get these to look like snowflakes. Let's test it first. Kind of look like snowflakes. We're going to, they're snowflakes today. We're going to just add a couple. Maybe they're, they're Western snowflakes because <laughs> our snowflakes on the East Coast. Well, first of all, we haven't had any snowflakes for some time, which kind of stinks in itself, but all right. So now all we have to do is we're going to adhere this, but the biggest thing we have to do is add our rail or our cables, I should say. So I'm going to put this on a square so I can tell that it's secure and if this is where it goes where do we want this whoops where do we want this so this is this is what i was talking about this is what makes it a little bit difficult only because trying to line it up correctly a bigger one here there it is. so this rail or cable Still, you do need a really large block and it is going to need to go on diagonally. So, just doing my best to line it up. So, you figure you're going to line it like that and kind of put it straight on. So, we're going to do that with Memento. But instead of de going into the ink, we're going to just put the ink to the stamp. So, that way we can make sure it's covered. Okay. So we kind of see where we want it approximately we're going this way so i'm gonna just move this and like that okay and there you go it's gonna fit on there so i'm gonna take all of these dimensional backings off just remember i have dimensionals and then i also cut the little strips so where is
and I'm going to just line this up. And you can either pick the higher rail, oopsie, or the lower rail, your choice. Okay, I went with higher. I'm going to put some glue on the back of this. This is going to need to be trimmed. Don't forget. I do like the fact that they made it so wide. So you could really go farther than that. I'm going to need to work on another card. Like that. With a wider piece. Maybe with like more than one gondola car going at the same time. So I'm just going to take my snips. Take that. Cool, that looks so nice. Okay, so let me put together, this is gonna be our inside panel. Same thing, we're gonna have to have a little part snipped off of here. I added a little bit of shading where I'm gonna plant my tree right there. I always like to check from the under to make sure it's okay as well. And you could even put this up on dimensionals if you wanted to, but it's up to you. I'm just going to glue it. So I have my shaded spot right here. I'm going to kind of just plant it right there. So plenty of room for your message. Same thing again. I'm just going to flip and snip. Okay. Move these over. Get all of this nonsense out of the way and grab our card base so i did not hit this with my bone folder so let me just do that the importance of a bone folder is so much so so much because it really helps you to get that crisp fold for your card one And I actually got the card idea from this for a, uh, a a snow gondola from a old, I guess you would say like a, a photo that's now on the internet. A, like a vintage postcard or advertisement or something. And honestly, it might not even be vintage. It might be somebody's take, but it was really, really cute. But it was in yellow the cable car was like yellow and orange which leads me to believe it probably was vintage because oh my e got a little no it's okay i thought my e got messed up but it's just a very tiny e um it's really 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 cute you remember if we had those uh i guess more autumnal color schemes back in the day these were long before myself as well so i'm not trying to claim this as my i uh, ages idea but um you know when they had everything that was like the yellow gold harvest gold I guess it probably was and uh avocado there was a lot of avocado appliances and whatnot so <laughs> those were definitely uh very very unique let's put it that way to that time period but I hope you have enjoyed this card it definitely was a lot of fun to create that's for sure all of these cards are really fun to create. It just depends that some of them sometimes are a little bit more time consuming than others. And maybe you'd have to be a little bit more um, picky with who you're necessarily going to give your card to. But I think this is a, a great stamp set. It really is. But I think the dies really take it to the next level. So again, this was the above it all. Okay, this is a stamp set, and then it does have the coordinating dies. Remember, this die was from the basic borders dies. So again, you could make this a much longer seam card because this piece is down. I believe that's almost, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's six inches. Yeah, it is. Look at me. Look at me doing all that eyeball estimation. Never be able to, never did that before I made cards. So there's definitely something to be said about making cards and measuring things it definitely gives you a different perspective on things so i hope you all enjoy this i just want to clean this up and show you all the stuff that was in there so definitely a lot of choices with what you want to make and then also here's my little card using the vellum i hope you all enjoyed this card today 
If you have any questions about anything that I use today, or if you have suggestions for a card, a card video, or a card idea in general, please feel free to send me a message here. Um, you can also send it to email at reachthestamper at gmail.com. You could leave me a comment on uh, YouTube because I do check all of my comments. But I thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join me. I hope you had fun. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. I would love for you to share this video with someone else that you think would enjoy it. There is a little link where you just hit copy and you can share. And the other thing is if you're new here, make sure that you subscribe. Turn on the bell for notifications. Which one is your favorite? Do you like the Shaded Spruce? Are you with the original or do you like the snow falling with the peacock? I think regardless, I think all the colors are very complimentary. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.